ever feel like um, you're just drowning in information these days? Trying to make sense of it all. It can be overwhelming, right? Totally. Right. And that's where I think theory comes in. Okay. But before you hit that skip button thinking this is going to be some boring lecture, it's really not. Yeah. Think of theory more like your secret weapon. You yeah. Know, for decoding the world around you. I like that. Everything from office dynamics to like global trends even. Exactly. And that's what's so cool about theory. We're not talking about like dusty textbooks here. Right. It's about understanding the why behind the what. Okay. So, you know, like why do some teams just thrive under pressure while others fall apart? Right. Or why do some companies seem to innovate so easily while others struggle to keep up? Theories give us that roadmap. So it's like we all have theories about why things happen. But yeah. this is about making those theories like... More rigorous. Yeah. More useful. You nailed it. It's like yeah. that difference between having a hunch that your favorite team plays better at home and actually like analyzing their home versus away game stats. Okay. It's that analysis, that deeper dive. That's where the theory comes in. Okay. I'm starting to see the light here. Mm -hmm. So in the material that you sent me, there was this emphasis on... A good theory being the most accurate explanation. Right. And, and I get accuracy and all, but mm -hmm. like what makes one theory more accurate than another? It's not like there's always a right or wrong answers there. Well, and that's the fun part. A theory's accuracy isn't about being right forever. Okay. It's about being like the best fit for the evidence we have right now. Okay. Think of it like those early maps of the world. Okay. They weren't completely accurate, but they were the best representation based on what explorers knew at the time. So, like, a good theory is like a constantly evolving map. Yes. Being updated as we gather more information. Precisely. Okay. And just like a good map helps you navigate unfamiliar territory, a good theory helps you navigate complex situations. Whether you're leading a team, doing research, or even just trying to understand the news. Okay. That really helps put it into perspective. Mm. The material also mentioned good theories making non-obvious predictions. What does that mean exactly? And any prediction that turns out to be true, a good thing. Good point. But think about it. Predicting that the sun will rise tomorrow isn't exactly groundbreaking, is it? Right. A good theory doesn't just state the obvious. It reveals these hidden relationships right. or challenges our assumptions. Okay. It's like that famous Hawthorne experiment. You know that one? Yeah. Where they thought changing the lighting in the factory would impact productivity. Right. But it turned out that just observing the workers was the bigger factor. Uh, that's a non-obvious prediction. Okay, now that's interesting. So it's about going beyond the surface level, finding those aha insights that make you see things differently. Exactly. A good theory makes you go, wow, I never thought of it that way before, but it makes so much sense. Yeah. Okay, that totally makes sense. There's this other thing that tripped me up in the reading um, unit theory versus programmatic theory. Yeah. It sounds kind of like those sci-fi movies where they have universes inside other universes. Uh-huh. Kind of. Think of programmatic theory as the established, like, canon in a field. Okay. The foundational knowledge. It's like the overall plot of a TV series. Okay. Unit theory is like a single episode. Okay. It contributes to the larger story but focuses on a specific aspect. Okay. So if we're talking organizational behavior, the overall idea that motivation drives performance would be programmatic theory. Exactly. Yeah. And then a specific study on how like different reward systems impact employee motivation, that would be a unit theory. So each unit theory is like a piece of the puzzle. Yes. Helping to complete the bigger picture. Exactly. And the more pieces we have, the clearer the picture becomes. Right. But just like with a puzzle, not all pieces are created equal. Which makes me wonder, how do we know when we need like a brand new theory yeah. versus just kind of tweaking the ones we already have. Yeah. It's like, at what point do you put down the old map and get a new one? That's a question researchers grapple with all the time. And sometimes the old map just needs an update, not a complete overhaul, right? Right. The material you shared mentioned the so what test for new theories. I love that. Yeah, it's catchy. But how does it actually work? How do we know if a new theory is worth our attention? It boils down to this. Does this new theory offer something we're not already getting? Does it solve a problem that existing theories haven't been able to crack? So, like, practical value is key. It can't just sound good in a textbook. It has to have real-world application. Exactly. Think about those managers we were talking about earlier struggling with employee turnover. 
Right. If a new theory could help them pinpoint the root causes more effectively, right. or even better, offer solutions, that's huge. Okay, so practical solutions are one check mark. What else makes a new theory, like, stand out from the crowd? Predictive power. Can this new theory predict things that our current theories miss? Does it give us a clearer crystal ball, so to speak? So it's not enough to just explain what's already happened. It has to give us like a better glimpse into the future. Precisely. Imagine if a new meteorological theory could predict hurricanes with twice the accuracy we have now. Yeah. That's a game changer. That's a powerful analogy. But what if a new theory doesn't have all the answers yet? You know, the material also mentioned that raising new questions can be valuable. Isn't that a bit like opening up a can of worms? It can be. But sometimes those worms lead to fascinating discoveries. A new theory might not have all the answers, right. but if it sparks new questions that kind of push the field forward, that's still incredibly valuable. It's like finding a new piece of a jigsaw puzzle. It might not complete the picture, but it gives you a better idea of what you're putting together. Okay, that makes sense. This is making me think about how important it is to be open to new ideas, even if they seem counterintuitive at first. Like that part in the material about functional turnover. The idea that sometimes employee turnover can be a good thing. That threw me for a loop. It's definitely one of those, wait, what, concepts that makes you pay attention. Yeah. We tend to think of turnover as negative, but like you said, sometimes it can be beneficial. So it's not about saying all turnover is good or all turnover is bad. It's about understanding the nuance, the context. Exactly. A good theory helps us navigate that nuance. It yes. helps us understand that what works in one situation might not work in another. It's like the old saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Right. What might be functional turnover for one company could be detrimental to another. This all makes me realize that with so many different theories out there, it must be tough for researchers to kind of separate the wheat from the chaff. Yeah, it is. It's like, how do you even begin to decide which theories are worth like investing your time and energy in? It's definitely a challenge. And it's something that the material you shared addresses head on with these concepts of parsimony and coherence. Okay, those sound like two words my philosophy professor in college would throw around. Can you break those down for me? Absolutely. Parsimony is all about keeping things simple. If we have two theories that explain the same phenomenon equally well, the simpler one is usually the better one. So it's like the KISS principle. Yes. Keep it simple, smarty pants. Exactly. No need to overcomplicate things. And coherence is about how well a theory fits together internally. Okay. And with other established knowledge, think of it like building a house. Each brick, each wall, each room needs to be structurally sound okay. and connect to the others in a logical way. So we want our theories to be like elegant, well-built, yeah. not rambling and rickety. Precisely. A good theory should feel solid, like you can rely on it to support your understanding of the world. That makes a lot of sense. Mm. But even with parsimony and coherence as our guides, there are still bound to be times when we have multiple theories that seem plausible. Sure. How do we determine which one is the most accurate? the one that's most likely to hold up over time. Right. So how do we put these theories to the test? You know, is it enough to just find evidence that like supports them? That's where things get really interesting. It's not enough to just look for confirming evidence. Okay. The real test of a theory is its ability to withstand attempts to disprove it. So it's like that saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Right. We want to try to break our theories to see if they like Hold up. Exactly. It's called theory falsification, and it's a cornerstone of scientific thinking. Instead of just looking for evidence that supports our pet theories, we need to actively look for evidence that might contradict them. That makes sense, but it also seems, I don't know, a bit counterintuitive. Why would we want to disprove our own theories? Wouldn't that kind of set us back? It might seem counterintuitive, but think of it like this. Every time a theory withstands an attempt to disprove it, it becomes stronger, more robust. Okay. It's like testing a bridge by driving heavier and heavier trucks across it. If the bridge holds, you gain more and more confidence in its strength. Okay, I'm starting to see the logic there. But, like, how do we do that? Yeah. How do we go about trying to disprove a theory in a systematic way? It starts with designing research that specifically tests the predictions of a theory. And I mean specific predictions. Okay. The material you shared talked about the importance of theoretical precision. Right. It's not enough to just say, for example, that task conflict will impact teamwork. We need to be more precise. Okay. Will it help or hurt teamwork? Under what conditions? 
how large will the effect be? So it's like the difference between saying this recipe makes a tasty cake yes. and providing like a detailed list of ingredients and measurements. Exactly. The more precise our predictions are, the more testable our theories become. And when we test those precise prediction and they hold up, it strengthens the theory. But if they don't, well, then it tells us we might need to refine the theory or even consider alternative explanations. That's fascinating. So it's this constant process of testing, refining, and sometimes even like abandoning theories, all based on the evidence. Precisely. It's an ongoing cycle of discovery. And sometimes that discovery involves taking existing theories and making them even better. The material you shared referred to this as theory elaboration. Yes, that's right. It's like taking a rough draft and turning it into like a polished masterpiece. I like that analogy. Theory elaboration takes the insights we've gained from previous research and uses them to refine, extend, or even challenge those existing theories. So it's not about starting from scratch every time we learn something new. It's about building on what we already know. Exactly. The material you shared highlighted three key approaches to theory elaboration. Contrasting, construct specification, and structuring. Okay. Let's break those down a bit. Okay, let's start with contrasting. What is that all about? So think of contrasting like taking a theory on a world tour. We want to see if a theory that was developed in one context, say in the United States, holds up equally well in other cultures, other contexts. So it's like if we have a theory about what makes a good leader, we might test that theory by like studying leaders in different countries, yeah, different industries, or even different types of organizations. Exactly. And by comparing and contrasting how that theory holds up in those different contexts, right. we can gain a much richer understanding of its strengths and its limitations. We might find that certain aspects of the theory are universal, while others are more you know, culturally specific. That's fascinating. So contrasting helps us understand like the generalizability of the theory, like when and where it applies and when it might need some tweaking. You got it. Now let's move on to construct specification. This approach is all about getting more precise with the building blocks of a theory. Okay, so if contrasting is about testing a theory in different environments, construct specification is about fine tuning the theory itself. Precisely. Let's say we have a theory about the relationship between job satisfaction and employee turnover. Okay. Construct specification might involve breaking down that broad concept of job satisfaction into more specific subcomponents, yeah. like pay satisfaction, supervisor satisfaction, and satisfaction with the work itself. So instead of just measuring job satisfaction as like a single thing, yeah. we're looking at its different like dimensions, kind of like facets of a diamond. Exactly. And by doing so, we might find that some facets of job satisfaction are more strongly related to turnover than others. Oh. And this deeper level of analysis can lead to more targeted interventions, more effective solutions. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So we've covered contrasting and construct specification. What about structuring? How does that contribute to theory elaboration? So structuring is all about clarifying the relationships between the different concepts in a theory. Okay. It's about understanding not just that things are connected, but how they are connected. So if we think of a theory as this like network of interconnected ideas. Yes. Structuring is about mapping out those connections. Yeah. Figuring out which ones are the strongest, which ones flow in which direction, that sort of thing. You've got it. Let's imagine we have a theory about the relationship between stress, burnout, and job performance. Structuring might involve exploring whether stress leads to burnout, which then leads to decreased performance, yeah. or maybe burnout acts as a mediator, meaning that stress impacts burnout, which then impacts performance. So it's like we're drawing a flowchart of the theory, yeah. showing how these different variables influence each other. Precisely. And by understanding these causal pathways, we can develop more effective interventions. Right. For example, if we know that burnout is a key mediator between stress and performance, we might focus on developing strategies to reduce burnout rather than just trying to reduce stress in general. This has been incredibly insightful. I feel like I've gone from feeling kind of intimidated by theory to seeing it as this like incredibly powerful tool for understanding the world around us. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. And you know, theory isn't just for academics. It's for anyone who wants to make better decisions, solve problems more effectively, and navigate a world that's just awash in information these days. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what's like one key takeaway you want our listeners to walk away with? I would say this. Next time you encounter a complex problem or a tough decision, think like a theorist. Ask yourself, what are the underlying mechanisms at play here? What are the key variables? How are they connected? 
By engaging with theory, you empower yourself to ask better questions, make more informed decisions, and ultimately just navigate the world with greater confidence. That's fantastic advice. So to our listeners, embrace the power of theory. Mm -hmm. Don't shy away from it. Use it to your advantage. Because when you understand the why behind the what, you unlock this whole new level of understanding and insight. And who knows, maybe you'll even come up with a groundbreaking theory of your own.